In this video tutorial, you're going to learn how to make a three-dimensional Adidas logo uh, that Google SketchUp considers a solid model that could be printed on a three-dimensional printer. Uh, the template that you want to use to follow this tutorial is the product design and woodworking template uh, in units of millimeters. So let's get to some working space. And we're going to kind of break this down. We're going to make the uh, kind of the leaf-shaped things first. Uh, make sure that they're the same size, and then we're going to add these horizontal lines. Uh, add a little bit of bevel to each, so a little bit of uh, intricate detail, and then we're going to make a base to put that on so it could be printed by a three-dimensional three printer. So let's start with uh, the leaf shape in the middle. We'll go ahead and start with uh, making some guidelines. Uh, we're going to make it a thousand millimeters tall. So we're going to start by making a guideline on the green axis. So you click on the green axis, move down, and if you want it on the green axis, you just type in zero. Stick the guideline on the green axis. We're going to make a second one a thousand millimeters lower. So we're going to take the line tool and make a line from one guideline to the next. Hit escape. And then we're going to use the arc tool to make the, the curved pieces. So the first click will be on the top of the line. The second click will be on the bottom of the line. Then we're going to move it out. You can see that that green line shows that it's going to be in the, the green plane or the red and green plane. And we want it to be out 250 millimeters. So I'm just going to type in 250 and hit enter. We'll use the arc command again. Grab each endpoint. This time we're going to move it out to the left and type in 250 millimeters. So before we go any further, you can see that when we zoom in, these arcs are only made up of a limited number of lines. And so they're not real smooth. There's a line here, a line here, and a line here. So I want to show you a technique to actually smooth out that curve. So we're going to go to the arrow tool, the selection tool, and we're going to select that. You can see that it selects the whole curve. We're now right click and go to the first options called identity or entity info. And it gives us some general information about it, um, what the radius of curvature is. Uh, and you can see that that line is made up of 12 segments. If we want it to be smoother, we just want it to be made up of more segments. So let's just pick an arbitrary number and say 50 and hit enter. Now we can see that this uh, curve on the right is a lot smoother than the one on the left, which is made up of individual 12 individual line segments. So let's do the same thing to the arc on the left. Select that, right click, do Entity Info, and let's change that also to be made up of 50 layers. You can see that that smooths that out as well. So let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, we now don't need this line in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and delete it. And now. We want to make three of these things um, so that we can make the three individual leaf sections of the Adidas logo. So I'm going to select it all by triple clicking on it and I'm going to move over a copy of this. To do that, you're going to hit the move tool um, and if I were to click the endpoint and move it, or it would just move over the one leaf, but I want to move a copy of that over. So I'm going to hit control, see that the plus is right next to the move tool. Now from the bottom, I'm just going to move a copy over over here so we can work with that. To our hand tool. So we want to now take this leaf and rotate it over uh, 45 degrees in the clockwise direction. And so now that it's selected, we're going to pick the rotate command. And the first time you click the button is going to um, determine the point at which the object will rotate about. So we want to rotate it from the bottom over 45 degrees clockwise. So you go down to the bottom of the leaf, click once in the bottom, uh, go all the way to the top, and now if you move the mouse you can see that this leaf is rotating about that bottom point and we want to rotate it 45 degrees clockwise so you just get it moving in the clockwise direction, type in 45 and hit enter and it makes an, a perfect 45 degree angle. Now that it's selected, uh, we're gonna let's move it over so it's close to that center leaf. So I'm gonna pick this endpoint and then we can move this back and forth. I'll just kind of move it in close right there. Okay. 
Now, I want to make that left, left leaf, and we could do the same thing. We could move a copy of the middle one over and then rotate it 45 degrees uh, counterclockwise, but I'm going to show you another way to do this. Um, I'm going to make, uh, you can see that the, the left leaf is really a mirror image of that right leaf. So if we could like flip it horizontally, um, that could work. So let me show you how we would do such a thing. So let's let's move a copy over so we have a copy to work with here. So type M for move, press control for moving a copy, and let's move a copy way out here. Kind of get over here. And if we want to flip this thing, uh, you can do that by just using the scale command. So it's already selected, and over here is the scale command. We're going to click on that, and we can do a lot of things with this. We can grab a diagonal corner and make it bigger or make it smaller if we want to, and it, it'll snap back to a scale of one if you see that down in the lower right hand corner. You make it bigger, it's bigger than one. If it's smaller than what it was originally, it's a scale of less than one. So let's go back to that, keep it at one. Um, and if we click on one of these horizontal ones, we can like make it bigger horizontally or thinner horizontally, but we could also uh, go to the left hand side and see that it flips this thing over. Um, I'm going to have to move this a little bit more just so that when we flip it over horizontally it doesn't merge with that other leaf. So I'm going to go back to the move command, give us a little bit more room to work. So now that it's selected, let's go back to scale. And I'm going to grab that right side and then move it all the way to the left hand side until the scale on the bottom says negative one. And it should snap to that. I'm going to finally click the second time. You can see that we've basically now have a mirror, a horizontally mirrored image of the, the right leaf to make our left leaf. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, go back to our arrow tool by pressing the spacebar, uh, press M to move it. I'm going to move this copy now on the plane over to the left side. There we go. So now we have our three leaves uh, with which we can work. So now let's let's look back at our logo. We want to have basically cut out three thick horizontal lines uh, moving through those those three leaves. So let's use some guidelines to do that. So it's the same all the way across each of those leaves. Okay, so I'm going to go back to guidelines. You can either press the tape measure tool or you can just press the T key. And I'm going to put a, a guideline 600 millimeters down from the green line. So I'm going to just type in 600. And then I'm going to do five more lines, um, 50 milliliters lower each time uh, to, to make our three horizontal lines. So we're going to start on the one that we just made, uh, make it 150, make another one 50. So that's two, three guidelines, four guidelines, and here's our fifth guideline. So now we want to use the zoom in a little bit so we get a little bit closer and we want to use the line tool to actually make lines across here so then we can delete the area in between. Now when you're doing this I would suggest zoom in. Uh, let's go back to the line tool by pressing L and before you press make a line you want to make sure you are getting the intersection of the guideline and the curve and to do that you really need to zoom in and when you're at the intersection, you'll see a little red X. So you know that you're at the actual intersection. So I'm going to click once and zoom out a little bit so I can find that other side. And see that it's kind of hard to get the exact intersection unless you actually zoom in. So use your middle mouse button to zoom in. There's that red X. Now you can see I've got a line across there. So you're just going to have to kind of go through. It's a little tedious. And we're going to make a line from one so the left side of the curve to the right side of the curve across each of our guidelines in each of the three leaves. So I'm just going to go and do that quickly. In the video I'll fast forward uh, so you can see the end product. Okay, so here we have uh, our left, all the left lines done. Now to, to delete the three sections right here, I'm going to take the eraser tool, and the quickest way is just to click on that curve right there, 
uh, notice it deletes that curve and the surface right there. So I'm just going to delete that. And now you can see a little bit better angle. You can see that we now have this clear, thick, horizontal line. So I'm just going to keep deleting what we don't want. And you can see we now have our three stripes. Now if we continue that, uh, using the line tool, making the lines and deleting everything, we can then uh, make those thick horizontal lines go all the way across, all the way across our three leaves. So here you can see that I'm almost done with uh, making the lines and deleting those the horizontal lines that go through each of our leaves. I want to show you just uh, kind of a technique that will make things a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I haven't made that last line right here. And sometimes, uh, in order to get the, the line to start and end at those intersections, you really need to zoom in. So let's say you press L to get your line tool. We click once, and you can see that we've got our line um, kind of like anchored down on that, that left side at the intersection. But um, if we zoom out far enough and try to go over there, uh, you can see it doesn't snap to the intersection, so you really need to zoom in. Now, one thing you can do, let's say if you're zoomed in like this, and you just want to like pan over or use the hand tool, if you press H, it does turn into the hand, um, but uh, we can go over to where we want to go, zoom in a little bit, and if I hit L, it actually goes back to the line tool, and notice uh, the left side of our line is still there, so it's just it's still waiting on, for us to finish that line. So you can go now and get the intersection and click for that second time, zoom out a little bit, and you can see that all the lines are made. So I'll go ahead and erase those surfaces, erase those extra curves to get here. Okay, so now we have uh, our basic shape. Uh, now we're ready to push or pull this out so we can actually pull it up into three dimensions and we don't need our guidelines anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and press the space bar to select the arrow tool and just delete our guidelines. So this is really now just a you know infinitesimally thin uh, two-dimensional surface. You can see why we want to pull that up. And so here we're going to use the, the push-pull tool. Looks like this. Click on it once. And you can see that when we hover over a surface, it selects the surface, or the, the blue dots show the surface that we would be using. And we want to press this once and then move it up. You can see that you know we can take it up, we can move it down, and we want to move it up. 50 millimeters and so we're going to get it in the upward direction and just type in 50 and hit enter. You can do the same thing here, type in 50 and hit enter. Or a uh, quick way, once we have one the height that we want, let's say we want to move this one up 50, we press the mouse button once, we can move this up and down, and if you move the mouse over so it snaps to a near end point uh, of one that's already 50 millimeters high, you can see that it's automatically snapping to 50. So we click the mouse button a second time, and now we can go through, click on the surface, go to an endpoint, click on the surface, and it's going to automatically snap it to, you can see, this, the very same height. So I'm going to go through that quickly and get those all to be 50 centimeters tall. And there we go. So the next step is uh, kind of be like a little detail that just kind of adds, uh, might add another detail that uh, other logos might not have. You can see that um, there's like a bevel where it's kind of like rounded, not rounded off, it's like a flat line <clears throat> along the surfaces. To do that, we need to use something called the Follow Me tool. And you, if you have to do it a very specific way, otherwise it's going to kind of, you'll, you'll, you'll realize when you don't do it right because it's going to be all screwy. 